Uh, hey, Liz, welcome to our very first riff. Uh, you and I, I think, are chatting about student agency. You want to get us launched? Yes, this is awesome. I'm super excited for these just sort of quick chit chats. Um, and um, I'm excited to start with student agency because there's like a lot to talk about with that. Um, I, I don't know. Um, actually, I, I would ask you because I know you've been going into lots of schools lately. I mean, I can give you some some examples where I'm excited about where I see student agency happening, but I'm only like in one um, sure. one setting. And um, I'd love to hear what you've been seeing out there um, that we can share with others. Well, I think one of the things that I'm seeing as I, you know, for those of you who don't know, I've been visiting innovative elementary middle schools all around the country. It's been really fun. Um, the joys of having a university sabbatical. Uh, one of the things that I'm seeing is that, um, you know, there seems to be a fundamental tension felt by many places between sort of, you know, we're in grades pre-K through five, so we have to do foundational knowledge and skills, and that means kids get no agency, mm. <laughs> right? Mm. Um, and I think I just have gotten to see a lot of schools that are saying, well, even within that task, right, that overall mission, uh, there's still lots of ways that we can have kids drive their own learning, explore mm -hmm. some interesting passions and so on. So just seeing lots of creativity on those fronts. But, you know, maybe we could start by just talking about that tension because it feels like a false tension to me, but I think it's very real to a lot of school folks. Mm. Yeah, because I think part of it comes from um, people like I hear when you say student agency, um, you know, it becomes, we don't want it to become the uh, the new buzzword, right? But it, so for some people, it, it, they don't quite understand, you know, they think immediately, they might think like voice and choice, okay, which, yep, that's like, definitely important. But I think um, that it's helping people to see that there's, there are a lot of layers to student agency, and especially in the elementary age, like um, there, because one, I feel it starts with getting to, you know, make sure that people know their kids and their individual potential that they can see in all the kids. Um, and you can do that with any age, right? Um, and so, so I think that's, you know, I, I agree that there is that, um, whatever you, you said, false tension there that, that people think like, oh, you know, we're, we, we have to do these certain things. I also think there is the real, the realization that there are a lot of schools, a lot of districts that are in situations where they are feeling like they are um, boxed in with what they can do and have to do. And that's also, I think, like wrong thinking <laughs> because, um, the last thing we want to do is, you know, have a prescribed method um, and go back to what, how we all went to school. <laughs> um, right. Um, you know, Liz, one of the things I always struggle with around school is that, you know, the psychologists like Desi and Ryan and self-determination theory tell us that the number one factor in human motivation is autonomy. Right, it's just ability to make some choices about your own life, how you do things, <laughs> you know, what you get to do and so on. Um, and schools are really low autonomy spaces for young people, right? We tell them what to do almost every minute of every day. And that's particularly true in elementary. Um, and so, you know, there, I think what's interesting about grades K through eight is that, you know, in the younger grades, they're young enough that they'll typically hang with us, right? And they say that they sort of enjoy school. As we go up the grades, we start losing them by the time we hit middle school, like, you know, mm -hmm interest and engagement and learning just starts dropping like a stone. Mm -hmm. um, and it's because we're violating that fundamental human need of autonomy or agency, if you want to mm -hmm. call it right on a daily basis. Yeah. And I, and I think, um, you know, like I'm wearing my uh, shaped by play sweatshirt today. You can't see. And th that yeah. like we, you know, this play and the sense of wonder and all those things that, you know, go along with when, when we let kids and adults um, have that <laughs> sense of autonomy, uh, we take it away. Um, and for sure, you know, um, middle school, like I feel like of all places, <laughs> they need it. They need it more. Um, I mean, in high school too, I actually talk about how like I want middle school and high school to always come down to our school to see, to, you know, not just the students, but also the teachers to see like what happens when you, you um, 
you share that power, when you give that autonomy back, um, you know, when you let kids set some of their own goals for themselves and give themselves feedback and each other, um, magic happens <laughs> when we yeah, do that. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, there's this continuum of agency too, right? Like, are there, are there still going to be some teacher directed activities? Of course, there's still going to be directed instruction, direct instruction, of course. Right. Um, and so, you know, depending on the day, lesson, unit, thing to be learned, kids in front of you, whatever the context is, right? That's going to be a sliding, or it could be a sliding scale if we wanted, right? I think what I'm worried about is we see a strong prevalence of scripted curricula and scripted mm -hmm. lessons down on mm -hmm. the one end, which is mm -hmm. a grave concern. Uh, we don't want to get too loose on the other end. We still have things mm -hmm. we want kids to know and be able to do, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So it can't just can be, can't be complete anarchy, usually. Um, it's that place in the middle that I think is the a sweet spot, literature. finding the sweet spot. <laughs> right, right. And it's going to vary, you know, you know, throughout the school year, depending on what we're doing. But in general, I think younger kids can exhibit more agency than we typically have given them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what I hear over and over again from teachers who actually do that is that they're always surprised at how positive the outcomes are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think about and not even, this isn't, wasn't even an example so much of, um, I mean, I guess there was definitely student agency was a component of it, but I think about with my kindergarten um, students, um, at one point last year, I was talking to the teachers and the tasks that they were giving them. Um, and, you know, it was, the ultimate goal was to get them to express themselves through writing. Um, but they were, not only were they scripting it, but they were really, um, leaving like no room for kids to show what they could do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, we had a meeting and I talked to some teachers and I said, like, what if we don't, <laughs> you know, give them the prompt or tell them, you know, what if we just see what they can do? And they were, you know, they, of course they're like, well, they're not gonna be able to do it. Okay. Well, I mean, that could happen. Right. Um, but so I think um, my favorite phrase last year, a lot of times was I said to people all the time, what if, like, nice. what if we tried this, you know, it might, it might fail, it might not work, but we might also be surprised. And I mean, sure enough, in that example, we were the teachers. I wasn't surprised, <laughs> but I've seen that happen before, yeah, but the sure. teachers were like, oh my gosh, like, you know, they're, look at all that they just produced. And I was like, oh, it's, that's weird. I mean, but if we had just gone along doing what we'd always been doing, we would never know that, you know, and those were kindergartners um, who were at the same time, still learning their letters and learning to you know, begin to read. Um, but yet they showed us that they had a whole lot more potential in them and that that would have been missed. That would have been, um, you know, we would have just gone about what normally had been done. They would have gone through the year and the teachers would have still had that same um, perception that same their, you know, their perceived reality of what their kids could do um, if they hadn't stopped and just asked what if. Awesome. You know, it speaks to all the literature around teacher expectations and how sometimes mm -hmm. the limiting factors are beliefs about what kids can do rather than what they can actually do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, feels like this is probably going to be the first of several agency conversations. I I'm know, right? About four other, you know, big topics that we can right. talk about. Um, but I think, you know, one of the things that, you know, strikes home for me here as we wrap this up is that we are very prone in education to point out the limitations or the concerns of something new mm -hmm. out also concurrently pointing out the limitations and concerns of the things we're currently doing. Mm. Ooh, right. That's uh, yeah, that I like that. That's <laughs> so I'm going sort of to reuse that. Yeah. Well, I mean, we take for granted that kind of like what we're doing now is okay and works when we actually yeah. know in reality that it doesn't. Right. But we're very quick to point fingers at the new things rather than pointing fingers inward. Yeah, because I think sometimes we don't take the time to, um, you know, I mean, what, whether you call it like reflection or, you know, um, gathering feedback on ourselves, you know, we don't take the time to do that. And I have found in many different experiences when we set, when we stop and, you know, um, get people to look at themselves or look at each other and just observe and, you know, like, let's just go see what we, what we are doing, um, you know, at yes, we've been doing it and maybe it's okay. And maybe it seems to be working, but like, let's just observe and take note of that because that's, and I think 
that's when you do see the limitations. Like they don't stand, they're not going to jump out every day um, because nobody's looking at it. Nobody is like um, reflecting on that. Nobody is, you know, trying to dig a little deeper. So I think that when we stop to do that, um, then we see those limitations and then we can kind of be a little bit more open to change. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, Liz, we're just riffing here, but as we conclude, uh, it might be interesting to try and come up with a leadership frame to think about each time. Mm. Um, and the one that's in my head right now is that, uh, you know, an, an important leadership frame for us as school administrators is before we are quick to point out the limitations, concerns of something new, let's make sure that we're also examining current practice to make, uh, rather than assuming that what we're doing is always working. Mm -hmm. Love it. I think that's, that's a good uh, note for us to maybe end on. Nice. All right. Thanks for our first chat. We'll look forward to the next one. Yes. Sounds good.